This is the Trading Psychology Podcast. This is VP, creator of No Nonsense Forex and author of the book No Nonsense Forex Trading Psychology. And with me, as he is every week, is Rob Reinhold. Well, hello. It's nice to be here again. This is Rob from Maverick Trading and Maverick Currencies. We're a prop firm where we let people trade with our capital and have profit splits with them. And before we get into episode 17, a little bit of housekeeping we need to go over. So as uh, constant followers of the podcast know, we've had uh, two book giveaways already. Having a little bit of problems with this, and it's not really a problem on our end, it's a YouTube problem. For some reason, and I don't know why this is, and I don't know how many people this is affecting, but Rob is not, he used to be able to, but he can no longer comment on my channel. Um, and oddly enough, neither can Dan Stone from Stonehill Forex. So the two people I work with to do videos with cannot even post comments on these videos. It's very strange. It really makes me wonder how many of you out there are trying to comment are, and are unable to. So I have forwarded this to YouTube. I do not expect to hear anything from them anytime soon. But in the meantime, here's what we're going to do. If you're listening to this on a podcast player and you want to know the results of the book giveaway, please go to YouTube. Look at the top comment. I'm going to pin a comment from myself, list the winners of the book giveaway. And from there, what you need to do if you're a winner is email support at maverick.trading.com. And then Rob will send it over to you right away. Funny thing is I can actually comment. I can go on and comment to everybody and say, hey, a great job. But then when you go back, my comments are like they never existed. Yeah, because I hold all comments for review so I can get rid of spam and everything like that because I still get a lot of it. I wonder if that plays a part. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but hopefully I'll get some kind of answer soon enough. So anyway, we are into episode 17. I don't think this is going to be a really long one, but this is more of a VP episode and it's called Systems Over Goals. And before we get too deep into it, I wanted, wanted to find different kinds of goals. I, we've already done this a little bit, Rob, on the show. There is a very clear difference between good goals and bad goals. I think too often they're painted with the same brush. Can you give me some examples, maybe some examples we've already talked about, of some really good goals traders can have and can shoot for? Yes. And in the last episode, I believe I said that goals to me, I don't, I'm not a big fan of goals. So goals to me are like wishes and wishes don't make any money. But when you think about that, any goal that is more of a wish, then I think it actually has some negative consequences. Here are some good goals. Number one, goals must be achievable. They must be measurable and they must have a time limit. So anything you can do in that area is going to be a good goal. If you've read the book Peak, back in our episode of Trading Like an Athlete, we talked about how to become really good at something. And it was to break down a very complex task into very small pieces and perfect those pieces. That's how your goals should be. They should be small and measurable. So anything like that is going to be very positive. Would you say that I want to hit a plus 6% return on my trading account this year? Uh, would you consider that to be a, a good positive goal? No, I consider that a wish and wishes don't make any money. We said that last episode and I'll say it again. That's a wish. I love it. That's great. We can have all sorts of wishes, but that is not going to do a damn thing for you. Okay, good. Because I feel like that's small. It's certainly measurable, but that does fall into the category of goals that, yeah, I, pers that I personally hate too. I've even said on my own channel, look, in my head, I do have a certain goal I shoot for every year, but if I don't hit it, I don't hit it. You know, it's just, it's, it's a little bit of a benchmark, but I don't strive for it because that's really where people get into trouble. Let's say, for example, that you wanted to make 6% on your account this year. Let's say you started in January and December's rolling around and you're only at 3%. What do you think people are actually going to do in the month of December that they should not be doing, Rob? Trying to get that last 3%. By any means necessary just pushing like, oh, maybe if I trade really hard, you know, I can get there, you know, maybe if I just leverage up a little bit just for the month of December, you know, maybe I can hit that goal. And then what invariably happens, everything falls apart and you went from 3% all the way down to zero and there you are. Patrick, I've got a great idea for your channel. Let's make a trade harder t-shirt. Like you just have to trade harder. 
Just think of that. That'd be a cool shirt. Work hard, trade harder. I love it. Oh, man. And you know what? It would sell, not to people who listen to this channel, but it would sell to the majority of Forex traders out there because this is such a big fallacy. I'm glad we're going over this today because this takes a long time to figure out. It certainly took a long time for me to figure out. I thought all goals were good goals as long as they were positive, but they're not. Let's say I want to join a prop firm in two years. Well, for most people, it takes a lot more time than that. Now, you do have to have some experience under your belt. You got to build a system. You got to test a system. You got to trade with the system. You know, it's nonsense. You know, just get there when you get there is the main thing. And, you know, I understand you need something to shoot for. Okay. But shooting for a goal like that is the wrong approach. What I think you really should be shooting for instead is being able to follow a routine whether it's a daily routine or a trading routine, or in this case, absolutely both. And what you should be really striving for is to do that at maximum efficiency all the time. What do you think of this, Rob? Anything you can do to break things down into smaller pieces, like we talked about in the Trading Like an Athlete series, is that break it down into something small and manageable that you can measure, then all of a sudden you can actually have success at that. And I'm going to go back to that episode and kind of talk about, let's say someone says, I want to be in the NBA. Okay, that's great. That's a great goal. That's a great thing. But do you realize how many steps are in that person's life to even get to that level? So that's great to have that aspirational goal. But how about just work on your free throws until you hit nine out of 10 all the time? Just do that. Just start there. All of a sudden, you can progress and measure and feel good about yourself. Whereas someone else might be frustrated that they're not in the NBA yet. Break everything down into little pieces and you're going to be amazed at where you are. And I'm not going to say that, you know, I want to join the NBA, you know, especially if you're young and you have talent is a stupid goal. For most people it is, but for some people it's not. However, you're not going to get there unless you follow a very disciplined system in your daily life. I mean, how many times have you seen kids with all the talent in the world show up on a college team, you know, but they're lazy and they never make it to the next level. Or somebody takes a chance on them, they end up going to Europe, they don't make it there either just because they don't have a routine in place. That's why I think that daily routine episode was so important because my goal every day at this point, Rob, is to take that daily routine and make sure I hit every single bit of it. That to me is a successful day. And if I'm able to string that together all week, then that becomes a successful week. Because if I just do that, I feel like there's no way I can't succeed. I have the ability. I have the drive. I just need the discipline and the actual um, action ability to go with it. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of people's lives. Just take a goal like I want to be able to walk a mile. That's a great goal, but guess what? The only way you get there is by taking a step and another step and another step and focusing on each step. If that's where your focus is, you'll get to the end. If you're just thinking, oh, I can't believe I'm not there yet, then all of a sudden you're going to do all the things in your brain that sabotage your success. But if your focus is on the next step, one step after another, you'll get there and you'll realize, oh my gosh, I'm already there. I got to my destination. Where someone focused on the destination Oh, it's so much further. I can't even see it anymore. Like you're going to do all the things that undermine. That is a perfect way to tie all of this together. Just follow your trading system, follow your daily system. If you can do that, it's so weird. There's really no ends to what you can do. And there is a particular book that I really like. Now, this is not going to be a book giveaway. This is something I think you can get for seven or eight dollars on Kindle. This book is so empowering. I, you guys, I've read so many books in my life. They don't have a lot of effect on me these days. This was different. This book is called Non-Negotiable, 10 Years Incarcerated, something like that, by Wes Watson. I don't know if you know who Wes Watson is, but he's one of those people that if you ever hear him talk, even if it's just for 20, 30 seconds, you will never, ever forget him. It's kind of like David Goggins, but more intense and he's this way all the time. Now, if you can even imagine something like that. 
I did so many highlights in this book, and I never do highlights on a Kindle book, maybe once or twice. I was highlighting left and right on this damn thing. The book talks about exactly what we're talking about right here. Screw your goals. It's all about the system itself. You can do anything you want to do. You can become anything you want to be within reason if you just learn to do this because your competition can't. Either they can't or they don't. So just focus on that itself. I'm going to, if it's okay here, Rob, I'm going to read a couple passages in this book because it was really interesting how this book even began. Wes spent 10 years in California's most violent prison and became a shot caller like pretty quick within the system. He kept it clean and he got out without getting in too much trouble, without falling into depression, without falling into drugs. Following an actual system is what got him there. To make sure I don't get demonetized or have my channel taken down, um, I'm going to replace the F word with F. Um, because I will say this, if you're sensitive to curse words, don't buy this book. This book, I will guarantee you, has the highest concentration of mother effort in it that you will ever see. Because <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's just how prison guys talk. And still one of those guys deep down. To kind of intro this a little bit, there's kind of like an OG guy in the prison that he's there for life. And he does the same thing every day to the point to where it's almost weird. And this is when Wes found out. And this was the turning point for everything. So the book, the book reads... Testament to that, there was a hot-ass day I remember clear as F on the yard at Donovan, of the level four yard. My homeboy Jammer from Dago, which is one of the prison gang names for San Diego, uh, was an old school cat. You know, big old handlebar mustache and a cold convict stroll. He had been down forever. He's not getting out. While I'm on the yard, a correctional officer pulls me over and says, hey, Watson, check this out. And I go, hey, sir, what's up? He says, wait one second. He points to the line where the inmates report for kitchen work, and he says, your homeboys walked around that corner that this time every day, at this particular time every day for the last 14 years. Watch this. He's going to be the first guy around that corner. And I wait and I'm like, bullshit. But then, oh, F, here he comes. Practically on the dot, he stepped around that corner. I was struck by Jammer's level of consistency and dedication. The fact that a cop was noticing this and an inmate was just huge to me. And it sparked something in me that I'll never forget. Jammer would work the scullery, washing dishes for 8 to 14 hours. And he'd do that shit with a smile on his face. The extra meal at the end of the day sure as F helped, but he looked forward to it because he saw the work itself as a gift. It brought peace and contentment to his heart. From that moment forward, I knew I would aim to be the most consistent man alive as long as I lived. And then the, the part I have highlighted down below says, The man who takes more pride in the steps to attain the result then the result itself cannot be stopped. The work truly instills the work. You know, it's funny, Rob, like I pretty much live this myself. I didn't realize how profound it was till I had somebody else say it back to me like this. But that really speaks to the process and how the process is so more important than the end goal. Do you have any takes on this at all? I have a really big take because this is a very big thing in my own personal life is that I was always ambitious as a kid and I always knew I wanted to work hard and make a lot of money. I was always, I was always just ready to do that. So when I became an adult, I found trading when I was 21 years old and I had had actually a teacher in my sixth grade. I had a teacher that brought in the stock page of the newspaper and showed us how to read it. And I was really interested in that. And so when I finally got some money, that's what I wanted to do. And I was so ambitious. And I wanted it so bad. And I wanted to have all these goals. My first goal was I wanted to make 100K by the time I was 25. I wanted to have a million bucks in the bank when I was 30. And I wanted to be retired, living off a of fixed income at 35. Those are my goals. Those goals set me up to actually take longer to get to those goals because I was focusing on all these things. So I pushed, I pushed really, really hard. And it caused me to actually take some losses that I didn't need to take because I wanted it so bad. I see this whenever we bring in a younger trader at Maverick. I see this so much. And, and I always tell them, hey, look, it always bugged me when the old guy, whoever it was, told you, oh, don't worry, you're young, it'll happen for you. You just have to be patient. 
when I was in my 20s and some old guy said that to me, um, whatever, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to get it now. Now that I'm the old guy, I hate that I'm saying it to younger people, but it's true. And so I push and push and push and kept shooting myself in the foot. And then I finally came to the conclusion, okay, I just need to work my whole life because that was one of my goals to not have to work in my life. That's what I thought I wanted. And I realized, no, I'm just going to work my whole life. I'm going to go every single day and put in a full day's worth of work. And I don't care where I go. I'm just going to work. Once I put my head down and started working and just working on the system, working on the steps, again, growing my net worth every single year. I remember one day I looked up and I was there. I was there. And I didn't even really recognize it. And once I was there, I didn't care I was there. I just wanted to keep going. For anyone who is younger out there and you have that ambition, you have that fire inside you that I just, I love that about people. But I want you to understand that those old guys, as annoying as they are, they actually are right. It takes a lifetime. If you're willing to commit for your lifetime, just focus on step after step after step. You will get past where you want to be. I promise you. But if you don't work on those steps, I don't know what's going to happen to you. So just a personal experience of mine and just helping anyone who's younger. Don't push too hard. Enjoy the process. And it's especially hard for younger people too, because I was that same way. I mean, how great would it be to have a lot of money in your 20s? Um, it would be fantastic, right? Well, it actually might not be <laughs> because the chance, one, the chances of you losing that money is a lot higher. Two, like you have so much of your life ahead of you after that. It's like, where do you even go after that? You know, the fun part is the building part. It's always been that way. You know, the, the fun part with my uh, YouTube channel was building it, you know, not maintaining it. That's boring. It's, I hate it. The fun part was building my system and trading. I've said I've said it out loud on this podcast. You know, I don't particularly enjoy trading, even though it's really quick and doesn't take up most of my day. I've just done it so long. All the excitement that used to be there just isn't there anymore. Enjoy the ride. The ride is the best part. There, don't be in any hurry to get there because it is the worst thing you can do, and it's just it's going to set you back instead of push you forward. Fall in love with the system. Embrace the process. You know, that's the best thing I can say to anybody. Young, old makes no difference. Sometimes if you're a little bit older, you rush things too because you feel like your, your time's up. It's not. You have so much time ahead of you. Follow the system. Fall in love with that. I'm currently in love with that. You, you heard our daily routines. You know, they seem pretty eccentric to a lot of people. They seem over the top. But you know what? We follow them. I don't know about you, Rob. I feel like I'm in a good place because of it. What about you? I'm at a fantastic place. I do love my routines, but I love to travel as well. And when I travel is when I, I let go. I let go and I don't follow any routine. I don't go to the gym. I don't work out. I always say two things. On vacation, two things don't matter. Calories and money. And then when you get back home, that's when you get back on the horse and you do all the steps every single day. You show up, you put in a full day's worth of effort, and then you pack it in, you go to sleep and come back the next day. Yeah, for sure. For me, on a short-term basis, it's Sundays. I don't do anything on Sundays. Longer term, it is travel. Travel is my time away. But honestly, when the most exciting part sometimes for me is when I land back in whatever wherever city I'm staying so I can get back on the horse and get back on, on the system. Sometimes I miss it, you know, because it's just such a part of my day. I've learned to enjoy it and embrace it. And God, it, it's so much better than trying to hit a goal that could have so many weird variables step in your way on top of it, you know, that's not, that's not even your fault. And then you don't hit it. I just, it took me so long to learn this. And so I'm so glad we're able to share it with you now. Really, honestly, you know, please check out that book. It's a pretty quick read. It's very intense, but it is impactful is all. I mean, it is impactful as, I, as I've read a book in probably five, six years, honestly. Rob, do you have anything else to add before we sign off here? Yes. One of the things I now tell people, is that if you have these aspirational goals, and again, we love those, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that the path you thought would take you there doesn't end up being the path that gets you there. I promise you that. And Patrick, as you said, things will come up, little obstacles will come up and things will change direction and you'll have to be fluid and make some changes. I promise you, you take all the steps, you'll get to the destination, but I also promise you, it will not be in the straight line that you planned out. 
You just got to put your head down and work. And sometimes you're going to get knocked off course and you're going to have to go around the mountain instead of through the mountain like you thought. Just keep walking. Just keep walking. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Eventually you're going to get there and you're going to look back just like I did. I didn't get to where I wanted to be the way I thought I was going to get there, but I got there all the same. Just keep walking, focus on each step. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here at the Trading Psychology Podcast. We will see you next week. Bye, everybody.